Terry. Hi. Welcome to Sault Ste. Marie. And you're here in the Sioux to share knowledge about some of the work that you do with OPSU. My understanding is that you are the health and safety coordinator? Officer, yeah. Officer. And you're out of the Toronto office, is that correct? Yeah, we have a health and safety unit there with three health and safety officers. Okay. And Terry, tell me about the work that you do. Why, why did you come to Sault Ste. Marie today? Well, I was invited up here by Rena Gooley, who sits on our Disability Rights Caucus, and there was an invitation that went out through the Labour Council to call all, all kinds of people to talk about PTSD and beyond. Okay. So that means that broadening, the idea of broadening attention to PTSD to other illnesses that can be gotten from trauma at work, also other workplace stressors that okay. plague workers who suffer diagnosed but also undiagnosed conditions. And so why should we wait till someone gets a diagnosis before action is taken? So it was kind of like psychosocial hazards as a health and safety issue that you can prevent at work. Okay. And you were stating that uh, Canada is a little behind the curve when it comes to PTSD legislation and that the, um, the British model or the European model is a little bit more advanced. Can you talk about that? Well, I guess the actions you would take to prevent workplace stress kind of depend on what you think it is. If you okay. think it's an issue that someone has in their mind that requires them to have help and how they, the person impacts the environment, more of a biomedical model, then you'll assess interventions to help the person improve, to help the person make themselves more healthy, wellness, eating, counseling, uh, mindfulness, resilience, to so they impact their environments in a more favorable way. Okay. That's kind of how Canada's focus and the focus on PTSD is kind of fixing illnesses and stuff like that. Whereas in Europe, they, they do agree that the individual is part of the picture, okay. but they'll say that the context around the worker is more important and that a more a sociological view should be taken where well, the worker impacts the work environment, the work environment impacts the worker. Right. And so where is the workplace change? Where do organizations change the way they operate to actually improve people's health? Because I can eat right, I can exercise, I can have medication, I can practice resilience, I can go back into the workplace and find the very same context around me that causes me to, to lose you know, control again. And so the context is important. So that's what this talk was about, broadening PTSD and, and, and helping people after they're harmed to okay. actually how can we take action before they're harmed okay. and how can we take action that involves organizations making changes on how they operate okay. so that they don't harm workers' health. All right, and you were talking about collective bargaining playing a role in uh, how to shape uh, PTSD strategies, I guess. Yeah, I was talking about uh, how every human being has needs. And we talked a bit about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right. where we need security to be able to put food on our table, decent pay, we need meaning, we need a chance for advancement. Okay. We need all of that. And so what a collective agreement is, is all your terms and conditions of work in writing. Okay. And so we have an opportunity in unionized workplaces to negotiate rates of pay, how work is organized, the transparency of work, right. how much information the employer shares with workers, uh, all kinds of justice and respect kinds of things, um, rights, uh, you know, workload committees, managing workloads, uh, right. all of those kinds of things collective agreement language can include. Right. And so mobilizing collective bargaining language mm -hmm. and getting language and getting those terms of work in writing is very important for workers because you can deal with some of the sources of workplace stress by just having bringing clarity to the workplace. Right. And Terry, tell me, who are the people that were represented here tonight? So we had unionized workers and non-unionized workers. We had right. OPSU members. We had steel workers. We had different people from different unions. Right. Lots of workers involved in this issue. Right. And it was a lot of people on the front lines. You talked about the um, emergency workers, the people on the that respond to horrific accidents and stuff being. <coughs> Yeah, frontline uh, first responders definitely they face trauma on the job. They'll see more trauma on the job okay. in one day than some other workers will see in years. 
and so they have vicarious uh, trauma, vicarious, they see things, they hear things, they're exposed to things that other people aren't exposed to. So the PTSD presumption in Ontario will allow them to get benefits without going through the hurdle of proving it was work-related. Okay. What we say about that is that, you know, not only should employers pay attention to the operational duties okay. about trauma and blood and gore at work, right. but we're, employers should also pay attention to how they run their organizations and how the, how running them in certain ways. With We talked about workplace change, uh, mm -hmm. change not being done properly, people having mm -hmm. not even sure if they have a job the next day. Right. How an organization runs should be part of the picture of prevention. Okay, and prevention is the key to uh, much of this. Yeah, and so we talked about, uh, from a health and safety framework, you can prevent hazards like psychosocial hazards, even work demands, okay. work organization, mm -hmm. um, relationship. You can prevent things at the source, which is primary prevention, mm -hmm. um, fixing the problem before it becomes a problem. Um, along the path, like raising awareness or s having awareness training where it stops things from getting worse. Or you can do, you know, at, after the person is harmed, tertiary preventions, mm -hmm. which bring harm to them. You can also send uh, interventions to the individual and to the organization. Uh, I think a good approach, a holistic approach okay. to mental health in the workplace would involve primary, secondary, and tertiary interventions okay. that are aimed at the individual and at the organization. Okay. I, I call that model the tic-tac-toe table. Okay. That's kind of uh, an employer. Because, you know, you ask many employers walking down the street, a lot of them have wellness, which sure. is a secondary intervention. Okay. But where they, you know, they talk, where workers eat right and exercise, uh, wellness, you know, makes people healthier so they could tolerate more. But it's a secondary intervention. It's not going to remove the stress. Okay. So we want um, an employer to focus on, you know, changing the things, how it runs in the organization that stress mm -hmm. people out. Right. So focusing on those things as well as bringing the supports mm -hmm. to the workers after the harm. So it's looking at the individual, how the individual can affect change within their own self, yes. and how the organization can bring a meaningful way for that to continue to roll out. Yeah, so the organization should support and assist the or individual change that's going on, and they do that through wellness committees and providing, you know, pamphlets on smoking and yoga classes at lunch. They they can okay. support that activity. Well, what we need the organization to do is to think is to look at itself and say. Okay. Do my leaders have a supportive management style? Right. That supervisor that's doing that return to work, what kind of a, a, an attitude do they have? Right. Um, you know, how do I, as an organization, do ever, does everyone know what to expect when they come in tomorrow? Right. Am I handling change in a responsible way? Okay. Do I give people recognition for the work they do? Mm -hmm. How, uh, how many days notice do they need to have to get a day off from me? Right. How easy do I make it as an organization to balance a work and a family? Mm. So we're asking for a, for a holistic approach. Right. An employer should support the worker in all the worker's activities, and the worker should do activities. Okay. But so should the organization. I think leading employers will realize... Right. That if everybody else is just focusing on the individual, yeah. and they can focus on both the individual and themselves, right. they will have a leadership advantage that no one else has. They'll be a leader because they'll be doing it a little more like Europe mm -hmm. and a little less like how Canada started off. Well, it's an incredibly important topic, and I, I was very well attended tonight, too. So thank you for bringing your knowledge to Sault Ste. Marie, and you're on slate to do another one yet tonight. Oh yeah, I'll have the repeat <laughs> performance. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming thank and listening you. to it. Thank you, Terry. Bye.